This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on? Reefing fam, Arch here. This is Fragbox TV. Welcome. Welcome to the store. Look at this. Welcome to our shop here in Toronto that specializes in these things. Saltwater coral, saltwater tanks, everything to do with the saltwater world. This is our Fragoon, but I don't want to talk to you today too much about our Fragoon. We're going to go over here. Come with me because we got some new corals in and one of them holds a very dear place in my heart. So I want to teach you how to keep them because they're really easy and they're very beautiful and we have a lot of them. So it's a good time to make a video and show off some of the different types that we have. This is the plate coral. And you can see where it gets its name because it grows in this circular plating, sort of like a dinner plate pattern. And they can get quite big. They take some time to get there, but a piece like this eventually could reach, you know, six or even up to eight inches across. But they do make a good fit for smaller aquariums like our Reef Casa 12 gallon right here, the studio that we have in the shop. Like this one right here. Not too big, not too small. Perfect to watch it grow out. Now, cool thing about plate coral, they come in so many different colors, like very, very cool combinations of colors. And we often find them with contrasting colors. So we'll see like a purple base like this one, but then green tentacles, which stand out really nicely against the deep purple. Sort of a rare color we don't see too often. This is a red plate coral. And then even maybe more rare than that, we have blue plate corals. Blue is really a tricky color to find in any LPS. And we only see these blue ones come really from Australia. In terms of lighting, I find they like low light. So usually par levels between about 50 and 100 if you have access to a par meter. Or generally, if you just put them on the sand bed, they're gonna do well. One thing to keep in mind though, flow. So they can kind of act like a frisbee or like a disc. If you have too much flow in your tank, they're gonna flip themselves and they're gonna be unable to flip themselves back over. So we definitely don't want them face down in the sand. So they do need some current though, because the current is what's gonna provide them food as they catch stuff floating through the water column. But also it's gonna give them a chance to clean their bodies of any sort of detritus that builds up because they have a tendency to kind of collect um, detritus throughout the tank. So we want to spot on the sand bed so the light's good, not too much flow, but then again, not too little flow. If it's too low, again, the detritus is going to build up and then it, it can cause bacterial infections if they're unable to clean their bodies. Now types of plate corals. There's three different ones that I'm aware of. We have our standard plate here. We have diaceris, which are kind of similar, except they grow in less of a circular formation. You can kind of see the ridges here and the shape of it the way it's not perfect circular circle. And these ones you can actually frag. They'll actually sometimes fragment themselves. You can see right in the middle there, it has four different separate mouths where our standard plate coral really will usually have just one. And then finally, we have the very different and very beautiful Heliofungia. This is the long tentacle plate coral, which often gets confused for anemones or even torch coral because of the long tentacle. Blow off here in the tank, but just so you can see it, that one right over there, the purple one looking from the side, if you didn't really know what you're looking like, uh, looking at, you might confuse this again for like a torch or even a purple anemone. But unlike anemones, these don't have a sting. So you don't have to worry about them attacking or hurting, injuring other corals. You can see right here, it's up against an endophilia without issue, another plate coral. And then it's even over here touching an open brain, but they're not gonna hurt them. So not like an anemone, not like a torch, no sting whatsoever. It goes for all the types of plate corals, the diaceris and the regular plate corals, but they can get stung. So we definitely don't want these LPS corals to be touched by anything that has a sting. So that would include hammer corals, absolutely torch corals, frog spawn, any sort of euphilia really that has a tentacle can and will sting it. So we wanna keep it as far away as possible from those ones there. Now they love to eat. If you can find this, try it. This is our homemade coral curry. This is a great all around LPS food, soft coral food, super easy to use and just spot feed them right directly in their mouth. Now finally, water parameters. We like to keep our water here within natural seawater. So alkalinity, we're aiming for about 7.7, .7, calcium of 450, magnesium 1500, and salinity 1.026. These ones like most stability out of the three that I've shown you today, the long tentacle, they really, really want stability, but they're really not more difficult than the other three in my experience. And I think that's about it. It's a really easy coral. Uh, when it comes to LPS, I would say they're even beginner friendly. Maybe not the absolute first coral you put in the tank, but don't shy away from them because they're really unique, they're one of a kind, and they don't look like any other coral out there. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, like us, like the channel, all that fun stuff as we kind of work through and do videos on all the different 
pieces in here because we love doing coral care videos. That's it. We'll see you on the next episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.